This video, I'd like to talk about a growth mindset, what it is, why it's important and how we can develop one. There are some people who believe that, uh, that you're just born with the intelligence that you have and that there's really nothing you can do about that. And that there's no reason to, to challenge yourself or, or get worked up about it and just live within, you know, your own little patch of grass there. And don't worry about uh, trying to grow or expand at all. And that's just uh, silly. That's been proven time and time again to be wrong. And that's really what the growth mindset is all about. Growth mindset and tells us that, that, that it's the belief that a person's intelligence can be developed through hard work, that we can expand our mind, that we can uh, learn to use more of our brain than we do normally. So the, the fixed mindset is fixed mindset and growth mindset. Fixed mindset says that you're locked in. Whatever you have is what you have. There's no reason to get, you know, uh, worked up about trying to, to get any smarter or, or expanding yourself at all. It's locked in there. And there's a, like you see, there's a padlock on it. The growth mindset though says that we can cultivate this just like growing anything in the ground. We can, you know, it's a garden. Our mind is a garden. We can grow uh, flowers there. We can grow corn there. We can grow whatever we need to survive. We can help it develop by giving it, giving it water and giving it sunlight and giving it nutrients. And so it's been, you know, metaphorically, obviously, uh, we're not going to do those things literally to our brain, but, but that we have the ability to expand our intelligence and to, to expand our world and our, our potential as a result. So a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, fixed mindset basically says, I can't do this. This work is good enough. This work is too hard. I'm not going to put any more into it. But a growth mindset says, I can do this a little differently. I can try a different strategy and challenge myself. Is this really my best work? And, and, and acknowledging that this may take some time and some effort, but we can, we can do that. We can expand our mind. Okay. So how do we do that? Okay, now we know what a growth mindset is and we have this, uh, the science is there. Uh, you can, you can go look it up on your own if you want, but the science is there. Uh, growth mindset is a real thing. We can expand our intelligence. We can expand our, our perception and our, our abilities through this. Okay. So how do we do that though? To develop a growth mindset, uh, one major aspect of this is finding your purpose. Finding something that you're interested in, that you're passionate about, that you, where you fit, where your skills are at, where your, your, your natural abilities are at. Uh, doesn't mean you can't do things that are a little harder for you too, but, but it's, it's helpful to find those things um, that are, that come sort of more naturally to you and where you can excel and, and uh, you can exceed expectations and really find your purpose. Okay. So, so spend some time discovering who you are, what it is you want and how you can best get there, but, but also what's going to be the, the path that can lead you there. What is your purpose? Next, you need to challenge yourself. I mean, as this graphic depicts, there's a spot where you, there's your comfort zone. And then outside of that probably is where the magic happens, right? So there are times we need to get out of our comfort zone. We need to challenge ourselves intellectually and, and sociologically. We need to challenge ourselves and not just stay within our little circle. We need to be willing to say, okay, this is outside of my comfort zone, but that's where growth happens, right? We need to challenge ourselves. I remember when I was growing up, I have older brothers and uh, one of them in particular is a basketball player and I wanted to be a good basketball player and he's eight years older than I am. Right. So he's not only older, but bigger and had more skills and, and probably just had more natural talent in basketball. And I hope he never watches this video. So he never hears me say that, but obviously I have more natural talent, but I improved as a basketball player by playing against him. I didn't get any better by playing people who were worse than me. I got better by playing against him, by playing against other people who were better than me and challenging myself and really working at it. in that way it was outside of my comfort zone and my ego got bruised a lot of times, but, but that's where the magic happened. That's where I saw improvement. So we need to challenge ourselves and get outside of that circle. So we need to change our vocabulary and really insert the word yet. So anytime we're saying, you know, I, I can't, I can't do this. It's not my skill set yet. There's always the potential that we can add that, right? I haven't done this yet. I haven't been able to accomplish this yet. I haven't gotten to the level I want to at work to be able to, you know, to, to shoot for that promotion really, because I can't do this thing yet. Right? So add the word yet to your vocabulary and add other possibility words to your vocabulary uh, and, and take the, take the negative connotation away from things like challenge and hard and, uh, and difficult. Take, take the negative connotation away from those things and welcome those things. Right? So we need to change our vocabulary as we think about these things. 
We also need to establish goals. We need to have a, you know, a plan. We need to have some specific goals and we need to, to develop this using SMART goals, right? And SMART's an acronym, as you can see there, for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. And there's all kinds of resources you can get at that have to do with goal setting and SMART goals and things. But we need to set goals. We need to set goals that challenge us. Again, that word keeps coming up, challenge. But we need to set goals that challenge us, but that are also realistic. We need to set goals that are measurable and specific, that have a number attached to them, that have a time, a specific time frame and sense of timeliness attached to them. Um, so we need to set and establish these, uh, these smart goals and, uh, and, and really use those to push ourselves then. We also need to increase our grit. You know, we need to understand that these things are hard, but that most things in life that are worth having are difficult that takes some effort on our part, that takes some perseverance, right? Getting a college degree, for example, takes a lot of grit. You know, there's a certain amount of intelligence involved and in that kind of thing, but it also takes a willingness to set other things aside. You're going to set aside time with your family you're, that you're not going to have. Set aside time for your hobbies that you're not going to have because you're pursuing this education, right? Set aside some money that you could maybe use for some other things for this. But, but that's what grit is. That's what perseverance is. And it doesn't come in a straight line. There's lots of stops and starts and, and fits and starts and just, you know, it's, it's a challenging thing, but grit and perseverance is what sees us through the other side. And so we need to increase our grit, our willingness to, to, to persevere and see things through to the end, even through those challenges and especially through those challenges. We need to kick the can. All right, when I was a kid, we played a game called kick the can, but this one's called kick the can't. We need to get rid of can't really kind of, again, changing our vocabulary. You know, it's not that we can't do these things. I mean, there are things, you know, realistically, are there, are there things that aren't within our, our grasp right now? Yeah, but, but we use that term way too, too liberally. Can't. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. No, most of the time when we say can't, we mean won't. We mean won't, that I'm not willing to do this. I'm not willing to put in the time and energy and effort that it takes to do this. So we need to kick the can't, really think about, is it a can't or is it a won't? Because okay. one is on us and the other is not. We need to seek out feedback, and that's scary. Uh, it's scary to ask people to give us feedback and tell us what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong uh, but, and where we can grow, um, because that's, you know, it's hard to hear those things sometimes, but we need to seek out that feedback, not just let it come to us, but we actively need to seek it out. And, and from the right uh, areas, we need to get feedback from the right areas and the right people. And, but we need to seek out that feedback. We need to practice mindfulness, which comes in a variety of forms, but we need to, to, to train our mind to, to settle in, to think about specific things, to just be focused on what, what it is we're doing, where we're at right at this moment. Right. So, um, we need to, uh, practice this mindfulness in whatever form that it comes for us. And finally, we need to, to value the journey. We need to value the journey. You see this stack of rocks here and it may just look like a stack of rocks to you, but in, in biblical times, this is what was known as an Ebenezer. It's an Ebenezer, right? When something significant would happen to somebody in the Bible or in biblical times, they would do what they call raise an Ebenezer. They would raise an Ebenezer to signify this is where something significant happened for me. This is a special place because something happened to me that was so special that I want to remember it. I want to memorialize it. And so they were taking time out to say, uh, this is my journey and here's where I'm at and here's how you can see where I've been because I'm raising these Ebenezers along the way. And we should do that too. We should raise Ebenezers, not, maybe not literally, but uh, in our lives, we need to find a way to raise an Ebenezer. Right? We need to find a way to value that journey, not just the, 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 the end result, but what we've taken from that along the way, all the little lessons that have built up to that one big moment, that one big lesson. Right. We need to value that, find ways to appreciate and recognize those. And that kind of leads into our last thing here, which is reflect. We need to pause. That's the pause symbol, right? We need, we need to pause occasionally and say, what am I learning? Am I on the right path? Am I doing, am I, have I found my purpose? Am I changing my vocabulary? Am I finding the right feedback? Am I doing all these things that I need to do to develop a growth mindset? We need to reflect on all of these things and make sure that we're on the right path then. And if not, we need to adjust. We have to have the ability to adjust and, and, uh, and you know, do things a little differently as, as needed. So in, 
in the end, again, growth mindset is absolutely a very real thing. We know that scientifically. Again, the research is out there. You can go look at that. But, uh, but we need to be focused on that. We need to be intentional about uh, building our intellectual abilities, building our, our uh, having that sense of purpose and that sense of, uh, of intentionality about uh, about building these things and about accomplishing these things. And uh, when we do that, I mean, it'll take you know it's a million small steps along the way, so it's going to be hard to recognize. But if we take that time to reflect and look back occasionally, we'll see. I'm not the person that I was a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. I'm changing, I'm growing, I'm improving um, because of this growth mindset. If you have any questions about growth mindset or anything else related to professionalism uh, and professional presence, uh, of which certainly growth mindset is an important aspect, an important part of that, feel free to email me. I'd be happy to, to chat with you via email and discuss these things with you via email. Look forward to those. And in the meantime, get out there and start focusing on that growth mindset. You can do it.